Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Abrazo Football Podcast. We got Brooks, myself, Blaine, and a very special guest today. One of uh, one of our good friends from way back in the day, way way back in the day, Mr. John, who seems to be an Arsenal fan. This is news to me. John, welcome to the podcast, man. How you feeling? <laughs> I'm good, brother. How are you doing, dude? Good. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New to Year. see you, man. It's good to see you too. Honestly. All right. Well, and I mean, I you know, I wear an Arsenal top from now, you know, every now and again. I I hate it to be the odd man out. I wish I had, you know, the current edition. That the color looks good. I got this raggedy thing on. You got like holes in it, logos falling off, but it is what it is. So anyway, happy new year. Let's get let's get into it then. I don't know exactly where this podcast is gonna go right now, but I guess I guess my first question, let me just start with one question for you, John. Why Arsenal? Dude, I mean, you got to give credit to the other guy on the screen, honestly. So, um, you were brainwashed? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, you know? So, oh, my. Uh, I mean, I'm a pretty recent acquisition, recent pickup to the Premier League. Um, and I just uh, didn't, didn't really know which way to go, which way to turn. And then my Rex was just like, Cheer for Arsenal, and I was like, "Bet, let's do it." So, uh, the last time I the, the last time I tried to follow the Premier League uh, was maybe ten years ago, and uh, you know, and, and the BuzzFeed quizzes were all the rage. And I remember taking one, and it was like, "Okay, do you want a blue blood team?" And I was like, "Kind of," but I also like to root for the underdog. Anyway, a long story short, it told me to cheer for Everton, and I was, "Oh, cool." Timmy Howard plays for everything, you know, we got the American connection, USA, yeah. like, let's do it. And so uh, I tried to follow Everton and I can remember distinctly like two things from that. One, I downloaded the schedule on my phone and two, I couldn't watch this game because they were all at like two in the morning or, you know, whatever. So I ended up listening on the radio like twice and I was like, I can't do this. So I gave up for a bunch of years and then, uh, uh, you know, call it brainwashing, call it what you will, but, uh, you know, happy to be in red for sure this time around. You look good in red. You do look good oh, in red. Thank you. <laughs> but, but one thing that I think should be said is like, shout out to NBC for letting letting the Premier League now, what, 10 years on, be so so easy to watch. And also, yeah. you went to a, an Everton game, didn't you? Haven't you been to yeah. Goodison Park? So, you know. Yeah, that's that's true. I did. My first game was actually the Merseyside Derby in Goodison. And I... I and I had, yeah. I had no idea. Like I was there uh, with my brother and like, he was like, do you want to go to a football game? And I was just like, yeah, sure, man. Like, cause it's kind of one of those things where I, I travel. I always try and go to like a local sporting event. So, you know, it's Australian, Australian rules, football in Australia, and whatever the list goes on. But yeah, that first game, I was just like, oh man, they take it seriously over here. Like, this is not a joke, dude. So, you know, growing up with American football, uh, you know, it's always just, you get kind of everything. And I suppose you get that probably too with English football, but like, you know, you go to a, you go to a university of Utah game, you know, the, the team that I would go to locally here. Uh, and, and there's, it's back, but not there, dude. Everybody, everybody was, you know, ready to die club. So it was, uh, it was quite, quite the introduction, you know, going to a, to a, like a fierce, bitter rivalry game, you know? So. What year would that have been, John? Jeez, dude, 2000, 2010, 2011, maybe? Maybe earlier. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fat minute ago, Very though, by now. Huh? Long ago. Yeah, so I was just, I was just trying to figure out, like, who, who would have been in the team, like, if it was, like, probably Arsenal or Liverpool and Everton were probably both just, like, middle-of-the-table teams. Back yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was, like... Like Steven Gerrard, maybe. Yeah, remember? Still, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he would have been there. Yeah, he, yeah. Stevie CVG would have been there. Yeah, uh, maybe Carragher or no? Was that did he had he already been gone by? 20? He he possibly still could have been like on like his last season. Uh, Fernando Torres. Torres? No, that for, no Tor. No, he might. No, I think he left in 09. Already Chelsea for Chelsea. Okay, yeah, but anyway, but still, that's I, really yeah. cool. I mean, I think it's pre Lukaku too, as well. I think. Yeah, I was going to say, I've only been to one Everton game, and it was when Lukaku played, and it was uh, Everton Man U, and they smashed Man U 3-0. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, it was a beautiful thing. That, was that a beautiful is a beautiful thing. thing. 
It's a beautiful thing. That was back when Rune was still on the team. But anyway, that's, this is about me. This is about you. Have you been to any matches since? No, man, but I've, I've watched them every single way. And I actually kind of to echo what Brooks said about shout just how easy it is to watch games now. Like, honest and truly, I, uh, I like it. There's never an occasion where I've not been able to tune in and, and turn on a game. Uh, we just, my, my family and I just did a road trip, uh, just down to Legoland in Diego. And uh, we left pretty early uh, after Christmas. And I was sitting there streaming games on my phone in the middle of the desert, like, you know, watching, watching the, as we go down. So uh, I think it's, um, I think streaming and broadcast rights being what they are, it's so easy to be, a, uh, to, to follow any sport. I mean, if you look at uh, even like Formula One, right? Like how that's exploded, right? Just just the, the ease at which people can watch it and consume the media now is is so cool. Um, you yeah. know, just creating global fan bases basically everywhere. It's rad. Yeah, that's cool yeah, that you bring. I, mean, <laughs> I was gonna say like what with the with we, John and I have talked quite a bit about F one because we've both been fans for. I mean, John's been uh, I think a F one fan for quite a bit longer. But the, yeah, the thing with like bringing like you can bring people into F1 now is like Netflix essentially the you know drive to survive and i think that what brought a lot of people in to soccer a few years ago was probably just the game FIFA every even if like people didn't really watch soccer or something like they knew FIFA and they played FIFA and they could kind of like relate to the players just just based of like FIFA because that game is yeah. literally everywhere in the world yeah definitely yeah I- I think that yeah, yeah, the same same could be said for a lot of a lot of video games too, man. And and it's just just gateways, you know. So yeah, I mean, I feel like there's something special. I feel like even people that don't watch like football or soccer on a consistent basis find joy. Like FIFA is like a top five game yeah. of like at least our generation of our lifetime. Like since. Since its inception, like there hasn't like like I don't know anybody that doesn't know how to play FIFA or it's like they might be like, yo, like I don't follow like a a club, but like I'm gonna get on FIFA. I'm gonna pick Barcelona. I'm gonna give you the business. It's just, you know, like FIFA alone is enough drive. But uh, yeah. okay, so the accessibility helps the uh, companionship of Brooks help and what do you so I guess guess my question for you is like so being that like you're just basically you're just getting back into it you were into it maybe you tried to get into it about 10 years ago and it didn't stick and you're saying it it, was it because of the time of the day was it because it was less accessible (laughs) what was the uh ultimate like deterrent that like said that you were like yeah I'm not doing this right now well so there's there's a couple factors there honestly and I think I think it for me Personally, it was kind of a perfect storm, but, um, number one, like, I think just like every American, you know, we like love to pretend that we're diehard fans every time the world cup rolls around. Um, you know, I mean, I remember (laughs) crying with the rest of the nation when, uh, when Portugal scored to tie the game back in 2010 or 14. Right. Uh, Oh yeah. I remember that game. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, we're, uh, uh, always kind of knocking on the door, man. And, uh, and I just kind of, you know, I had other interests too. I, I, I genuinely love, love, love sports. Um, and, and, and can really kind of be like convinced to watch almost anything except baseball. Uh, but you know, even, even in October, you know, it's all right. I'll watch with my mom. Um, <laughs> Post season. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, but for me, uh, it was, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I, I will say former slash present, like big college football fan. Um, and, uh, they, in, in the past two or so years, uh, they've made some changes in how players are compensated and how they can transfer. And it's really changed the game. And I don't think, uh, in a, in a good fashion. And so for me, it was kind of it kind of turned me off to the game actually a little bit. Hold up, hold up, elaborate on that. Okay, elaborate. so what were the changes and how was it uh, negatively impacting the game? What, yeah. What, what? So um, up until a few years ago, players in in college football, which is an amateur level sport, 
weren't allowed to get compensated for what's referred to as their name, image, and likeness, or NIL for short. Yes. And so with the NIL, uh, this this changed, uh, and I want to say it took effect uh, in 2019, 2020, something like that, where players all of a sudden could take money to be in a commercial. Obviously, they can't have the school affiliation, but let's take a player like DJ Uwe Agalele who played for Clemson, and their color's orange. So he'll be a Dr. Pepper commercial just wearing orange, right? Wow. And so he gets compensated for that to the tune of millions, right? But he, at the same time, any player now can be a, what, what maybe you want to refer to as like a journeyman player. Um, because if they're not getting what they want in terms of monetary compensation or playing time, you can transfer to another program. However, up until around the same time frame, you would have to sit out a year, and they call that the red shirt year, right? So you would have to you have to burn or use your red shirt um, to to transfer schools, which was a big deterrence. Now you can transfer and basically play the next day. So you have a, a lot of these programs. Um, a perfect example is Oklahoma and University of South, Southern California. The head coach at Oklahoma took the job at USC and he basically emptied the cupboard for Oklahoma because he took all the players with him to USC. Wow! And so all of a sudden you have this, this playoff team in Oklahoma going six and six this year. And then USC goes 12 and two or 11 and two or whatever. Right. And the year uh -huh. before they were, you know, eight and four, you know, seven and five, just kind of in mediocrity. So for me, that was, that was no good. Because all of a sudden, you don't get to watch a player start as a freshman, sit on the bench, you know, quarterback gets hurt, he steps up, has a great game. Next year, we're excited about him. His junior, senior year, he wins a national championship, whatever, it's great. So for me, those rule changes really kind of spoiled the batch. And so now I'm just like, you know, I need something a little bit more, you know, it sounds corny, but I need something a little bit more pure, right? So, uh right. You yeah, know, and, let me let me stop. You know, you know that happens in European football. Oh, dude, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, yeah. just so we're clear. Okay, that's the name of the game. Yeah. Oh, totally. Co Coach goes from club A to club B. He brings all his shooters with. Yeah, him. I mean, look, he brings the impact, right? Yeah, it's Spanish. You know what I mean? I okay. Just so we're clear. I'll let you continue now. I just want to, there's, <laughs> that's that's the hall. That's the hallmark of European football. Is yeah, okay, when I so, go, so. the the team comes with me. Right. I'm bringing my guys with me. Right, right, right. At any cost. Right. You know, and but where I think where I think I also got really tired of American football is after watching uh, European football for you know. Uh, well, this so this particular year, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little anecdote to, to kind of maybe usher in what I'm trying to say. But at the end of uh, at the end of the summer segment of the Formula One season, um, uh, I also I'm also a really 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 avid cyclist and an avid cycling fan. I've been watching cycling maybe longer than any sport. Um, and so the Tour de France ended, and Formula One went on their summer break, and those two things basically happened in the same weekend. And so I was texting Brooks and I was like, dude, what, like, what am I going to do now? And he's like, watch football. And I was like, okay. So I started watching <laughs> and I watched like three games and I was like, oh my goodness, dude, like, this is the truth. Like, this is it, man. Like the game doesn't stop. There's no commercial breaks. Like it just, it just goes and it flows and it's 90 minutes plus or minus plus a 15 minute break. And, and that's it. Uh, an American football game, dude, if you're watching a CBS SEC game, it's going to cost you four hours of your life. And I'm just like, no, thank you. Like, really, truly. So, so I started watching. Now, now bro, that's something we can agree on. That's, that's, I agree with you 100% there. Sagar, you know, yo, it's a nine, it's basically a two hour commitment tops. Top. And then I got to do whatever I need to do. Them right. American football games be going all day, dude. And they're so they started at nine. It's dinner time. They're still going. Timeouts, right. commercial breaks, two minute warning, sponsor breaks, two minute yeah penalty, you know offside, uh, reviewing the play. the play, yeah, dude. And yeah, not flag only that, on the play. And not only that, dude, but the plays themselves they only last like five seconds. 
It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I mean, I mean true. you're talking like a 40, 50 yard pass. That's the longest play in the game. And it, and it lasts five seconds. It's just, I just, I, I can't do it anymore, man. And it's funny <laughs> no. because I mean, if you're he's talking to me, if you're talking to John 10 years ago, dude, he's like, bro, where are you? Like, who are you? who's this guy, dude? But yeah. everybody, everybody says, oh, soccer's low scoring. It's not low scoring, dude. American football yes. just, just made up the points. It's, yes. It's not 21 to 14. It's two to three. Say it again. Cause that's, I, if you didn't bring it up, I was going to bring it up. Say it again, John, tell him. It's just Tell ridiculous. Him. And then you have like, oh, it's, it's oh, the ball it's went out the back of the end zone. So we're going to give you two <laughs> points and we're going to give you the ball back. Just because back in 1933, somebody decided that that was a good thing to do. Yeah. It's just, I can't do it, man. So anyway, so yeah. Utah, Utah's playing at the Rose Bowl in a couple of hours. I'm going to watch that, but man, I can't even tell you how divested I am. I'm just like, <laughs> just calm and collected. Just, just watching it like it's anything else. Yo, bro, I'm glad I'm just so I'm just glad you brought that up because that's people used to come come at me and like a couple people be like, yo, why do you watch, you know, why do you watch, uh, you know, soccer? We'll just say soccer. So there's no confusion. Yeah, yeah. Like it's so low scoring. It's so boring. And I'm like, no, man, any like almost any other clock based sport by comparison is less interesting because of the amounts of stoppages that take place. They're yes, not sir. like, oh, like you're watching basketball. Like we're, it's coming down to the wire. Yo, we got to pay the bills real quick. We got all state commercials <laughs> and some Taco Bell commercials and some Mountain Dew commercials. And then we're going to review the play when we come back. And then we're going to call a timeout. I'm like, no, bro. Like I don't even care anymore. Like not the not. last five minutes of any basketball game that's in contention alone takes 45 minutes to get yeah. through five minutes. You're not joking. That's the truth, then you man. talk about then you talk about the scores, right? You said at fourteen twenty one, that's three two. That's you know big numbers. Like, should we make goals in football count? You know, if you <laughs> score a goal, it's worth ten. Now the, you know, the score is twenty ten. Yep. Last thing, and then I'll let you get back to it is um the amount of games they play, right? Oh, I yes. guess American football, it's like maybe what they play is sixteen games. College football, what like. Maybe ten. I don't know. I don't watch college football, but like, eh, yeah, yeah. I guess there's no argument there. there it's a low amount no, of games. No, no, like there is baseball, an argument there, dude. Okay, it, I, how, how many games? I don't know how many games they play. So yeah, they well, so a, a perfect season. This a perfect season in the current setup with the playoff is fifteen and zero in college. Okay, but yeah, but but like you say, man, the number of games matters because um, a, a couple like there's there's a lot of points to be said there. Uh, but the number of games is, it, it's just like, no wonder the games are three and a half, four hours long because we only get, you know, 10, you know, so I mean, aggregate time, like across the whole season, it's probably the same. Right. But, <laughs> you know, Yo. but like, yeah. but I'd That's crazy. rather watch a game that like, you know, if you lose a game, it's not the end of the world. And I love that, you know, it, it's all right. In, in European soccer, right? If they lose a game, you know it's zero points instead of two or, or three or one point, right? It's not a big yeah. deal. You know, come we'll come again next week, right? Yeah. But in in college football, dude, if you lose, you're out. You're out. Yeah. You, you know, you, so the season's your season, blown. Yeah. Really? Your season can be done in September. You know. So yeah, bro. I feel because yeah. I mean, I don't watch college football, but I feel like the teams that legitimately like stand chances, like these, they're the teams that are going like. Nine and one, or ten and zero, oh. like or, or like like there's almost zero room. But you also get to make your own schedule, John. Talk to me about that, because that's the other thing where I could never get into college football. And I'm not talking bad about college football, but I'm like in the Premier League or other soccer leagues. It's like it's a it's an equal round robin. You play every right. team twice, once at home, once on the right. road, and it's equal. But it's like if I'm Clemson and I'm looking at the Utes, well, it's like maybe the Utes played in the Pac-12 or the Pac-14 or whatever elite cap talent. I don't, is Clemson SEC? I don't know. Clemson ACC, what? but yeah. Okay, uh, whatever. Which, which everybody like, calls the all cupcake conference because they're no good, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, see, and I don't know how I know this stuff, but it's like, it's not equal, but if they go like 12-0 and and the Utes go 10-2, and they're like, well, who who's better? And, right. And, and then it's up to like, uh, like a panel a of, a committee to say, yeah. 
their their one seed and their twelve seed. It's like, well, bro, it's the coefficient's not the same. <laughs> it, it, it like it's so hard for me to fall where I was just like, I gotta walk away. Like my right. dad trying to explain, I was like, dog, I gotta walk away. I can't Dude, do it. Hundred percent, man. And and everybody credits the SEC as being the best conference. Um, and so if you lose one game in the SEC to an SEC team, they call it a quality loss. Right. Because it's like, oh, you know, they they got they got that quality loss, dude. And it's like that sometimes is even worth more than a good win in a bad league. So it's it's so objective. And it's just, uh, you know, I like I like the ones and zeros, man, where it's just like, no, they they scored more goals. So they won. And guess what? They also beat everybody else. So they have more points total at the end of the day. So they get promoted or they get relegated or they go to Champions League or whatever, man. So, yeah. It's just, yeah, the, the format and, and, you know, to speak about relegation too, is just, it's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Like it really, truly is right. Like, you know, despite oh, yeah. the fact that, you know, uh, you know, let's say, uh, you know, Grimsby town is probably never going to make it to the premier league. They could technically, they could. right. Yeah. The path is there. Wrexham. Right. Yeah. yeah. Look at Wrexham. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang. John, have you been to MLS games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Real Salt Lake uh, is it, it's it's all right. You know, it's it's good. Like I, uh, you know, was I went to those games when they were good. I've been to their games when they're bad, which is more fun because the tickets are cheaper. But uh, but man, I tell you what, there's the the United States ability to follow football or soccer is. Um, is, is really fickle, you know, unless the team's winning, I feel like nobody wants to be there, which is, you know, there's, there's a lot to say here, man. It, you know, it's basically a comparison about European life and American life. Like it's such a pain to get to the stadium, right? You have to basically have to drive there. If you take the train, you have to walk another mile, two miles, whatever it is. And so people, unless they're winning, aren't going to go to games, but what's, what's, what's so just again, man, beautiful about the beautiful game is the fact that like your team represents your little yeah. town and where you're from. Right. And it's, and it's, it's, it's a core identifier as a person. Again, you know, you know, we could talk about Wrexham, right? Like all those people in this tiny little Welsh town, right? Like that's, that's their whole identity. That's their whole year, man. But yep. like me, dude, I got I got Real Salt Lake like five miles that way. I got the Jazz like five miles this way. If I really wanted to, I could be a BYU fan, you know, 45 miles down the road, right? Nothing's so local here. Nothing's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to walk out my street, walk down the road, and I'm at the stadium, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the, that's probably I mean, my favorite thing about about like club football is that or soccer is that like is the identity of that each fan has associated with that team. I mean, I, I just, so my very first time you, you, when you brought up your first time going and like how diehard the fans are, it just reminded me of my very first time ever going to a professional or a European game was in Barcelona here. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was in 2011. So the year after they had won the world cup. And at that point, Iniesta was hurt and Blaine probably remembers this just because he was obviously the legend. He won the world cup for Spain in 2010 um, but so I'm at this game in 2011, you know, it's the era of Pep, Messi, Iniesta, um, Ibra had just left, <laughs> but, um, Jeez. so I'm, I'm I somehow I had pretty, you know, close tickets to the, I'm like four rows up and, um, we are able to see who's starting to warm up. And so Iniesta is like, stands up and I just hear what the thing that's crazy to me is that how <laughs> the fans how how they see everything like even what's not happening at where the ball is like i feel like in american sports it's like you're really only paying attention to where the ball is but in soccer if you're not paying attention to movement off the ball or if you're not moving off the ball like you're, you're gonna get killed but anyway i just we yeah. hear this applause and this like little girl behind me is like and yes and yes and i'm like what the heck and i look down and then yes is warming <laughs> up and that's just how it was a child who was that hype about someone warming up on the bench who eventually you know got like eight or 10 minutes of playing time. But man, like they, they do, they have that, not only the love for the club, but the culture and the identity that it brings to their city, especially in a place like Barcelona, where it means much more than, you know, just a sporting team. It's like an actual identity and like, you know, a, 
a culture that's kind of been taken away in a language and this type of thing. So not to get political, but that I love that part of it from, from everywhere in the world, even like, I don't know how much we've talked about this, but my grandfather played for Boca Juniors and obviously there's Boca and there's River Plate right there in Argentina and Boca, you know, has that, has that there, not only is there a style of chase associated with these teams, like, you know, Arsenal plays some of the most beautiful football in Europe. Um, Boca is kind of known for, a little bit of like rough and they're going to be a little bit more dirty in this type of thing. So I, I just love the identity that each team brings to it. Yeah. And I don't know that like the American sports have that. Like one thing like growing up in LA, like the big thing that I think relates to it the most that I can understand is like Clipper fans versus Laker fans. And there's, <laughs> Cause you know, growing up, like the Lakers always won. But you right. really wanted to, if you were like a Clipper fan, you were like either only could afford to go to Clipper games because like your games were like mad expensive <laughs> or you are from, like you're from, you know, the area, which is ironic because yeah, they're from yeah. San Diego. But that's the other thing that I don't love is like all these teams move, you know, Seattle Supersonics yeah. are now the Thunder. The Clippers were in San Diego. The Lakers are from Minneapolis. So I don't know. I just love the whole like culture. Jazz of how it's down we're from New Orleans. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And we're, still, we, and we're still called the Jazz for some reason. Oh, yeah. Shout out Rebel yeah. Ryan Smith. Change it up. Yeah, right, right, right. No, man, I'm, I'm with you 100%. And I, I feel like actually maybe the last point is maybe one of the better points that you make about just how teams, what, like, teams, teams move. Right. The rate, the Raiders are in freaking Las Vegas now, you know, and I think, I think maybe the, the bottom line and the baseline, and I think this could maybe actually, we could circle back to this point with the, the, the attempted super league that they tried to make. Right. Um, with all the American heads at the, at the table of that one, uh, is that it's just about money. And I mean, and, and you can say that, and you can say that it's about money for any sport and you, you're not going to be wrong. Right. Um, but, you know, you take you take Barca, right? Um, Mas, Mas Keum Club, Mes Keum Club, right? Like, I mean, th that's that's their slogan. That's what that's the, the doctrine they're trying to preach. Right. Is that like, no, man, like, yes, here we play football, but this is more than just about football. Right. But ownership in American sports, I mean, the NFL is a 15, 16 billion dollar industry. You know what I mean? Nonprofit. And, and sure, yeah. <laughs> and sure, they do. They do like they do revenue sharing and all that stuff. So there's technically supposed to be an equal share and an equal chance. But guess what, dude? The Raiders sucked in Oakland. So what do they do? They moved them to a, a tourist town where they would make more money. There's, I mean, sure, Las Vegas, not a huge metropolis. It's a tourist town, hundred percent. But everybody who's in town, when they're playing, guess what, dude? If it's a Sunday. They're hungover and they're going to watch the Raiders. Interesting. 100%, right? So that I think that speaks volumes to to the mm, priorities of professional sports in America, because to them it's 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 just a business, man. And if you look if you look at what yeah yeah uh, what they're trying to do yeah. Americans that were supposed to be on like the governing board and it's like okay so where did they come from the owner of the what the Kansas City Chiefs right so you're, they're, they're trying basically in my opinion to push that sort of um geez we could call this like like colonialism in sports or something like that right <laughs> they're trying to take like the American format and push it on the yeah. Europeans and they were just like nah ended in two days dude beautiful response well, the crazy – the thing is, is where it's like – well, like well, with all American sports, from Major League Soccer all the way back to, the you know, America's favorite pastime, Major League Baseball, you're, you're – once you're in, you're in for good and the profits are shared. So it's like if the, if the, if the, if the Brewers suck and the Yankees are at the top, well, we're going to get together. We're going to play a four-series match and we're going to split that money. You know, it's not going to be 50-50, but everyone's going to get some. So you can continue to not be good. And make quota every single like every quarter you're gonna hit quota because we're we're all in this together. Yes. Or it's like or or like in basketball, let's say a bad player plays for Sacramento. It's like the, it's in the leagues, it's in the NBA's best interest to have the best player go to the big market. Right. And guess what? 
the, the, the Sacramento Kings, they're still going to get taken care of. It's like everyone gets taken care of together. They're all in this together. They're all Nike jerseys together. Like they're yes, all like they, they make it's like the illusion of, you know, 32 teams, but it's really one team. Yep. It's the NBA. It's the NFL. Yeah. And, and back to the Super League, it's like, OK, like these four Premier League clubs, like it's like I think it was 15 teams. They're like, you guys are going to get in. We're going to give you a ton of money and you can never leave the Super League. So now the level of competition, you know, in theory, it should be the super competition, but it's going to drop. And right. now you can like I, I was listening to a, a podcast this morning that talked about um the concept of tanking, which is an American concept because we have a draft system that's supposed to be fair. In no other country in the world where there's a competitive sport does the concept of tanking make sense or or, or, or lo- is losing incentivized. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're, you are incentivized by losing. Like the Philadelphia 76ers, they called it the process. It worked out for them. Trust but the if that happened... Trust the process. Shout out to Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. But if that would have happened for like, like, let's say like, let's say like Crystal Palace, say they tried to tank, they would get relegated to the third tier of English football so fast and they would probably never come back. There it they is. They'd probably never recover and their fans would abandon. Like you lost a game on purpose. I mean, unless you're Juventus and you're like doing some match fixing, you lost a game on purpose for what? Not GTFO. Anyway, that's. I just wanted to add that because, like, no. it's, it's a little bit frustrating. No, you think it's about on, it. man. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and I think, you know, we kind of maybe come back a little bit to the idea that, you know, the club belongs to the people, right? Yeah. Like, so, you know, the, the every everybody in town is, is not going to stand for that. You know what I mean? And, and I think that that's, that's maybe made evident by the response to the Super League, right? When you could say, in effect, like, you're, you're, you're trying to rig the this, this system the way that uh, it's done overseas or whatever and you, know, you get all the response from the whole town every single person you know coming in burning jerseys just doing everything right i don't i don't think there were any uh, there, the only time you see a burning jersey is when uh you know your favorite player goes to miami for example right yeah it takes talents to south beach yes that's right yeah and, and i guess let me say one more thing so like in theory so i remember when the super league was announced in theory like i feel like most people and i might be an outsider here like in theory Am I opposed to the top 20 best clubs in Europe going to a league and playing each other on a more consistent basis? Pro- prob- probably not, if the stakes are high. But if when the stakes, when there's no stakes, it's like, why? What, what, for what? Like, why? why it's like, I mean, and now I keep going back to NBA. When you got, a, a, you know, an 82-game season, it's like Golly. 75 of the games don't matter. The stakes. Right. I mean, I, I'm a Knicks fan. I watch maybe ten to fifteen Knicks games a season, and I'm satisfied. Even though those ten to fifteen games, none of them, none of them even, ma- none of them matter. They don't matter. Like, oh, you beat the Milwaukee Bucks today by two buckets. Great. Like, yeah. what your record for the season now is what twenty and five. Great. Right. Or actually, it would be five and twenty if we're talking Knicks. Like, let's be honest. Here. <laughs> like, they might win fifteen games a season. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Is just like. The stakes aren't there. It's just like entertainment for the sake of entertainment. You may as well just drop a Broadway called, you know, the legend of football and have them. Do, it's like, it's like WWE at that point. It's yeah. like, they're just going through the motions. I don't know. Dude, I mean, it's just, you, it's weird. you bring up a good point to, I think, and I think, I think again, soccer hit that sweet spot, right? Where there's the right amount of games, right? Uh, NHL plays 82 games as well. NBA Jeez. plays 82. MLB plays 162 games. Like, get out of here. <laughs> you, you, you miss half the season. Three quarters of the season, it doesn't matter. But then, you know, you have the NFL who plays, I think, 16 total games, which is way too few games, right? Yeah. But so, again, man, soccer just hit that sweet spot of, the, of like, the right amount of games in, across the whole season. So... I uh, have a question about like, so first of all, I think we should do a whole episode on like American ownership in soccer in like European oh, sports because yeah. there's there it goes deep. Also, like another one on like I get I get a lot of hatred. I mean, I'm, I was born to an Argentinian mother who, you know, gave birth to me in America and people still are like, why aren't you rooting for America? But I'm like, no, nah, I don't I don't I don't have any identity to this. So like right. there's a, I get a lot of hatred for people that are like so pro America and so pro U.S. men's national team or whatever, even though they watch it 
once every four years rather than like, you know, it's, it's their, you know, what they do on a daily basis. But anyway, speaking of the once every four years, was this one of the first world cups that you've paid it like this close attention to? And like, if, if it was, it was like probably the best one to start with because this was an incredible yeah. world cup. Yeah. So, um, so, so the earliest game I can remember is 2002. Uh, where the U.S. played Germany, and I, I want to say that was in Korea. Yeah, um, I can't remember. So and then, Japan, uh, I think they hosted it together, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember waking up. Uh, I was at church camp, and I remember waking up like at this insanely early hour to watch it with all the other dudes that were trying to watch it. Uh, and then in 2006, I had a friend who actually went to a game in Germany. And so uh, I was, you know, I was kind of watching it there. 2010 was the first year I remember, like, tuning into more than just the American games. And then 2014, I watched a lot. 2018, I don't think I watched. I think I only watched the final. Um, and then this this year, 2022, I don't think I missed a single game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, think, I think I watched every single game, every single opportunity uh, for any, any team. Yeah. Um, and, this, and this is like... This is kind of actually where I where I kind of owe Brooks a little like uh, hug and a kiss, man, is because uh, I feel like I feel like I feel like I've unlocked this like other very universal adoration of something that is shared with so many people, and I finally feel like I'm a part of that community in a real way. So I I'm a high school photography teacher, and um, and I didn't, I didn't really have a concept of how many of my students were so actively engaged in football across observation and participation. Wow. Um, and so, and so we would be in class and I would just, I'd turn the game on and, and, you know, more than just the kids who would rather be watching TikTok than doing schoolwork. We're, we're looking up at the screen and, and sort of participating with us. And it was, it was beautiful, man. It was really, really cool. And, you know, committing to a team like I've done with jerseys and stickers and waking up early and whatever, like I've done with Arsenal, has really forced me to become very well-versed very quickly uh, in the team and in, and in the sport um, and just in, in everything with it. So, um so, you know, I've been, I've been just enjoying every minute of it. And what a primer the World Cup was. I mean, just, just a perfect time. And honestly, like you said before, dude, I mean, the perfect tournament to actually, like, be wrapped attention to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what a, what a freaking blessing this whole, this whole tournament <laughs> was, dude. It was insane. It was so, so good. It was so good. What a time. Go. No, I, no, no, it was just so good. I was, I was, I mean, I think that most of the like deep footballing world was like, uh, I don't really know how this is going to, you know, turn out. And obviously there's, this is an entirely different conversation about how we feel right. uh, politically about all of this stuff, but, on, you know, setting that stuff aside, which shouldn't be set aside forever, but putting it away now, like it was a, it was a really incredible every game. I mean, it felt almost like I don't watch every Spanish league game. I don't watch every French league game. I pretty much watch every English Premier League game. Just I don't yeah. just because it's always you know it's anybody can beat anyone in that league. But this is kind of what the World Cup felt like. It was like all right, man. Like hey, Saudi Arabia may beat Argentina, and they did. And <laughs> you know it was just a really amazing tournament to watch. And uh, probably like pretty good for. I felt like there were a ton of like ex like like od americans watching it like more than ever this year and it's probably great for four years from now when it's hosted in the states that's one's in four years right yeah yes sir but and i kind of want blaine's opinion on this too because like i've because I, I know that I'm, I'm i'm biased and i have a little bit of extra not hatred but maybe animosity toward Jeez, like here we go eh. here comes something <laughs> super toxic mls and, and soccer in america because first of all Soccer is getting really big in America, which is amazing for the sport and it's amazing for the country. One thing that I hate hearing is like, yeah, man, in like in like yo, like five years, 
MLS is going to be there or at the, the men's <laughs> national team is going to be there. You, how young we are, how young we are. I'm like, dude, everyone is really young right now. Like English team is mad young too. So yeah. I just want the opinion of the two of you. Like is, I, I don't think MLS is going to get there. I remember in 96, they're like in 10 years, MLS is going to be taken over. I'm like, no, nah, it's just too crazy. To, it's going to be more be than just like DC that. United. Right. So that's all I, I just have a question on that. Like I, I, I'd, I've been to a couple games. Like I'm a Blaine, Chad, whatever. Like saw Terry on replay. I saw Beckham play a couple times. But to me, it's just like it's the fundamental system of how. I mean, you spoke about that earlier about the college football, and we've talked about like NFL now and basketball. But it's like they're trying to keep this world game Americanized, and I think that's what's hindering like the true progression of like making that maybe like a, a, a dominant superpower or whatever in in world football. I just I don't personally see it getting there anytime soon or you know let me say this right. so two things you asked two questions yeah, yeah, first yeah. stuff young americans coming up can america compete at a at an international level second will major league soccer be the league in 10 years from like what six 25 years ago yeah from 96 <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i'll say this so speaking of mls so the fact that mls is a business that's losing money every few years they need to expand the league and charge absorbent franchise expansion fees to new owners that basically it's like a ponzi scheme like oh we need a new team charlotte come to the league it's going to cost you a you know let's say uh 200 million and we're going to pay the rest of the owners with that 200 million because we weren't Dang. able to recoup what we, you know, initially told them. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps following this cycle. So until they can say, okay, like the money, like you're out, whatever money everyone's lost, you're out. Now everyone's on their own. There's no longer 36 teams in the league. There's 20 teams or maybe say, you know, here's the East division and the West division and you guys do your own thing. So you're not, you know, doing these, you know, continental flights and so on and so forth. <laughs> Figure something out where, you know, you can start implementing, uh, you know, relegation and promotion and all the things from Europe. So I think to a certain degree in America, it was, you know, to do playoffs at one point and to have a lot of teams and the way we name our teams and the way we do our promotion. Like, I feel like that was important to get enough Americans interested in soccer okay. so that they could then watch European soccer and see the way it's really done. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, so we start from where we are. Then you see how it's really done. Then we go back to where we are and emulate how it's really done. And I feel like they're just reluctant to do that because of the uh, financial component because like of relegating a team. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. Derwin Nunez just scored. But yeah, because of the American component <laughs> and everyone's bought in and they don't want to lose money. And it's like single entity. We're all, it's Major League Soccer by Adidas and right. um, Greg Garber or whatever the commissioner's Gosh. name is. So like, I feel like it will never work until we can get over that money part and we're American. So I don't think that we ever can. Okay. So I'll say that. That's how I feel. As far as the players go, now this makes no sense to me. Biggest country, one of the biggest countries in the world. We have talent. Like, oh, yeah. you can go back and look at the college players. You can look at the baseball players. You can look at, like, all the different players we have. We have talent. So I I personally think that, you know, the, the, the current team we have right now isn't going to be competitive in 2026. That's not going to happen. We're going to be competitive once we once there's no longer this pay-to-play system mm -hmm. in American soccer. Once mm -hmm. you don't have to have, you know, $30,000 to let your kid go to the academy or to participate in a local club, John. You know, there's several local clubs here. Most of them are just ways to make the owner of these clubs rich, and they're not really actually developing players or have the players' best right. interest. It's like, come join La Roca, allegedly. I don't want to get sued. Come join whatever club. The we're Rock. Gonna, we're going to yeah the rock and, and we're gonna we're gonna you know develop your kid so that they can eventually make their high school team so that right. they can go play for the university of utah and make it into the major league uh super expansion in 2030 and make uh their debut at 23 years old when they're already 10 years behind the ball you know so until i feel like those things have to change and when those things change then we can like start going i mean let's just let's call a spade a spade there are a lot of good professional players that came up with means but m the majority of the time the best players in the sports 
are the ones that play because they don't have an option. The football players, basketball players, hockey players, like these guys grow up playing in the streets, their backs against the wall. They don't have options. And it's like, this is what I have to do to win. And God knows we got tons of those people in America, but because it's only the rich kid from Princeton that's playing, you know, and he's good. I'm not saying he's not good, but like, he doesn't like, why would you go play for uh, Austin United right? when you can go take over your father's hedge fund and make three billion dollars a quarter or you know like it just doesn't make you know it doesn't make sense if you're in a position where your parents can pay 50 bucks to send you to the rsl academy you don't want to play for rsl like well for for starters you're not good enough to play for borussia dortmund and you don't want to play for rsl because why would you sacrifice your body when you can get several millions more doing anything probably what your dad does or what your mom does and that's i mean that's just how i feel so until we it's more inclusive we we aren't going anywhere that's just how i feel i could be wrong that's just how i feel that's how i see it dude i don't think you're wrong at all man i would echo literally point by point everything that you just said man i think the the most frustrating thing for me is um the the one player that i look to a lot when this argument comes up is josie altador right he's he's a big dude He's built, he's black, right? I mean, and, he, and he's, he's playing soccer, right? Or yeah. not anymore, but you know what I mean? But like, Yeah, he, but he was a baller in his day. Right, but can you imagine a guy like Jadavian Clowney? Uh, like, I, I, I don't know, just take any defensive end in the NFL and, and say, okay, now imagine if the United States was a, was a soccer-obsessed nation, the, or, or, or let's rather maybe reformat that and say that our – our culture, academies, everything, instead of leading to, to NBA and NFL and MLB and sports that none of the rest of the world plays. Uh, instead, you know, we have these dudes who are like six foot seven and just incredible athletes, right? Imagine if that's your, you know, center back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if our priorities back in the 30s were, were aligned with basically the rest of Europe, as far as sporting goes, the U.S. will be working on their 10th World Cup next year, you know? Bro, it, tell me, it, tell me about Argentina, a wide though. receiver. Tell me, about, tell me about some of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Tell me they couldn't be wingers. Can right. you imagine if they knew how to use their feet? That's what I'm saying. These guys, they're the fastest people in the world. Right. We, like we, you basically got like, have, we have an entire continent, basically, that we're calling a single country. So imagine if you took the best of Europe and said that that was one country. That's who we're dealing with, man. Like yeah. it's, it's bonkers that, that, that we yeah. suck as bad as we do for being the wealthiest nation on earth. And, I, you know, and I mean that both in terms monetarily, the, the willingness to, 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 to sacrifice your kid to the chopping block of sports <laughs> uh, Yo, for real, and, and then, and then just the dynamic nature of the bodies that we have, dude, we've got the Southeast, yeah. which produces these amazing, you know, colored kids, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, you know, we got, we got all the, you know, kids in the Northeast who are playing freaking lacrosse or something stupid. You know, it's like if, if our, if our, just our vision was just a line, you know what I mean? Towards a, towards a single one, man, it, it would be insane, yeah. you know, but yeah. you know, it'll never get there because, uh, I don't, I you never say never. Right. But it ain't but gonna, going to get there, dude. Yep. They have picked up. I so I I oh. agree I agree with Brooks, man. We we can go back to that the the creation of the of MLS and the teams that dipped in and out and DC United winning like ten championships in a row because they're the only team that was you know financially solvent long enough, right? Like it was just like it's just, it's just we just we're just not there, man. And is it disappointing a little bit? But at the same time, like you know, I can still. I can still speak the common tongue of the people here in the United States and talk about football, right? And then I can, you know, now go overseas and, and watch soccer and, and uh, what the rest of the world calls football and also enjoy that, you know? So I think, I think honestly, it, it winning, losing aside, dude, it helps you become a much more global citizen, uh, you know, much more complete person, I think, to – to be paying attention to the sport that the rest of the world is. So anyway, maybe a little, maybe a little uh, side quest there, but man, I, I, I'm enjoying every minute of, uh, you know, watching Liverpool and Brentford, uh, you know, you know what I mean? 
So yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. And I guess I'll say one more thing. Like it's not, it's not like America doesn't have like they're they're the best at basketball. Fine, they're the best at football because like the Canadian football and British football <laughs> is probably a joke. They're right. the best at pretty much every other sport: swimming, golf, all these other sports. Like maybe we don't have to be the best at every single sport in right. the world, and that's also okay. Like just it's if the question is, will we ever get there? It's like the hurdles are clear clearly identified if they ever decide they want to eliminate those hurdles we could be the best if we yeah. are the best i'm also like i'm not like i'm not bent out of shape about it it's not like i'm just like i i just don't like the delusion of people that's being like, what oh, i'm yeah, against like we yeah. up next yeah. we up next and it's like no bro just you gotta call a spade a spade like we can't be up next yeah because we don't we, you know like you you got like if you have like here's the thing like if you have less than 50 players that you can identify as up next like you look at argentina they got like 200 kids that are up next and they're all going at each other's throats you look at england they got like 300 kids that are all france like a thousand kids that (laughs) are all up next right that are all prospects that are up next and it's like come here dude our sample size is so small like like you can't even like I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying like most people couldn't even name every single person that plays on the U.S. men's national team that just came back from Qatar. So it's like – and you got guys – like when you don't even have enough superstars to fill Mm -hmm. a 26-man roster, it's like can you really say you're up next? Eh. The one thing Eh. that I want to say on top of that, like this amazing point that you brought up earlier was like the money thing. Like I – you like you look at brazil the poorest one of the i mean one of the obviously most poor countries yeah, it's out an there. impoverished country you know you look That's at fine. anthony you look at even just south america in general like di maria these dudes both grew up without shoes They're like no nah, i couldn't afford right. shoes so i was out here playing right. barefoot. so and people take a chip people people are out here actively looking probably you know there's some they're doing it for themselves too to make money off of these kids, which is not great. But they're looking for kids that have the talent, and I just don't think that um, like America, no one in America cares to find these kids that have the talent. Like you brought up that point, and so I think that that's probably you know one of the biggest. Yeah, let the biggest let there be no like illusions about uh, the willingness to exploit young people in America. Yeah, uh, I know, for, totally for, for their monetary gain. But I think. I think you you make a solid point, and I think just just to just to, just to add on to it, you know, people are scouting, but they're not scouting for soccer, man. Not in America. No. Yeah, no, they're and scouting they're, for they're, everything yeah, the else. money's not in it. Right. But also, like, how yeah. many of these? It started like with Jurgen Klinsmann when they were. He was like, "Let me find the German Americans," and now it's like right. hey, we've got like three or four dudes that are like British born. I don't think they even stepped foot in America till like their first training camp like a couple years ago and i'm like dude there are so many good players that you can find yeah in america grassroots i mean there's we don't have a grassroots but we that's what we need to develop is that yeah. is that you know lower league system and this i don't know the 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 grassroots system where you can actually find these kids that are this is the same thing with basketball like you said football like some of the best basketball players out there probably never even made it to high school basketball let right. alone the pros yeah yeah oh for sure for sure for sure yeah, they, 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 there's a saying in the community or in the culture, I should say, is the best basketball player you ever saw plays upstate, which is to say he's in yeah. jail. Yeah. But he's <laughs> the best player and you never saw him because he's at the state penitentiary. Dude, and yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like growing up, like I play basketball with some guys and I'm like, man, you could go to the league or like some guy. I like there's a handful of guys I went to high school with and I'm like, bro, you should be in the NFL. But for one reason or another. They either got shot. I mean, I'm not like I grew up in the inner city. Like I grew up in northern Utah. But still, you know, they were doing dumb stuff. And they either got shot or ended up in jail, like getting going to a party, getting drunk and like, you know, catching like an an aggravated assault charge. You know, Mm -hmm. and that's the, you know, I don't know. No, but but you're you're not wrong and and not to profile people or whatever. But at the same time, there's there's the whole avenue of how you become successful in sports in America there's this intrinsic flaw to it because it is tied directly to your ability to perform academically. All of our right. amateur sports, yo, are, yo, that's all right. All of our yeah, amateur sports right. are revolved around uh, your ability student to perform athletes. at high school, right? There's, there's, no such, there's no such thing as, as, as club American football that gets you to kick-ass college that gets you to play in the league. 
right? Because yeah. the problem is you got to go to a college. That's the right, problem. Right. The problem is you, you got to play at a college grades, team. If you can't make grades, look at Josh Gordon, right? Uh, dude went from Ohio State. No, I don't know. He plays in Cleveland. Went from Baylor to, I, I don't know, right? But the dude just kept flunking out of college. And then finally, somebody's like, hey, this guy's all right. Maybe we should give him a chance in the combine. And, you know, and then he has a lights out combine. Then he finally makes it to the league. But dude almost didn't get there. And he's not really there anymore for his own actions. But, you know, if, if you don't have a 4.0 or if you don't have, you know, whatever it takes to get to a good college, mm-hmm. good luck, dude. Good Even luck. Even if you've made a yeah. silly mistake. In the States, like if you make a silly mistake, they're like, you're cut from this and this and this and this and this. It, and not to not to like say that mistakes, I don't know, mistakes happen. Like you have Marco Royce who drove six like months a year without a license, you know. Right. But they, like in the states, you would be like, that's like a that's like a big penalty. And in in Europe, it's like okay, like you were dumb, pay this fine, but like get your life going. It's just like in the states, I feel like they like to hold back mistakes that can easily just be, you know, walked away from or learned from. I guess lessons learned, you know. But. Yep learning experiences issue. yeah yep 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 i think i think i think there is something in this we can man this is this is a very long discussion yeah, but there's 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 so many systems in place that i'm not going to say they're i won't say anymore they're passively still designed this way but actively i don't think they're actively designed this way anymore but they are in place to really keep those uh people of color specifically to, to hinder their progress, man. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, you know, again, I'm not trying to open that can. It's a very, very big can. Uh, but like you said, man, they make a single mistake. Guess what, dude, if you're a black and brown kid, you're getting, uh, you know, I hate to quote Kanye West, but he said, for face it, Jerome, get more time than Brandon. Right. It's yeah. really true. It's really, really true. Yeah. So, Jerome does get more time than Brandon. <laughs> so poor words have never been spoken. Uh, yep. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. John spitting facts. <laughs> uh, I have nothing to add to that. Yeah. Anyway, so to answer the question circumspectly, you know, just bring it all full circle here. Hmm. Will the United States ever get there? I don't know. I don't think so, though. No, I mean. It would have to take, I feel like it would either have to take a huge shift in the culture, like just like something, like something so big would have to happen to where it's like a bunch of guys with money were like, you know what? It's time to invest. Oh, yeah, but, but you don't but, have to. But what happens? The glaciers, where are they investing? They're investing in England, dude. They're investing where their money's smart, you know? Oh, yeah. So smart, you, money, see, smart money's on Man U. Sell it for five billion. Yeah, right. Also, yeah. football got to come it through would, and have some scouting in the States. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell yeah. you what. If if I ever somehow got rich, I would start a, a local club and I would put on young kids. But then it's also like the thing is like it, it's the whole system though, because it's like so. E- say you did find somebody that was like, I'm gonna build a facility and I'm gonna you know whether you're un- underprivileged or overprivileged, just if you can ball, you're gonna get the call. Mm. And I'm working with these guys, you know, from like age eight up to like sixteen. And then it's like, you still got to farm those kids to Europe because it's like the reality of the situation is like to, to, to control your own destiny. Say you are a baller and you stay in America, you go into the major league soccer expansion draft and you end up playing in, I don't know, like the Chicago fire for the first five seasons of your career. And it's like in making, and I mean, I'm not like it. I mean, let's be honest, people do this for money mostly. So it's like to make $30,000 a year playing four years in a row for the Chicago fire. That's not a very exciting prospect. So it's like, even if you are good and you're like American based right now, it's like, I mean, do you even like, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying kids wouldn't want to do that, but I'm saying like, if you're that good, we're saying if that kid is that good, they're still going to have to go to Europe, which yeah. means Europe's going to get better. Right. Europe's going to get better. America's yeah. not going to get better. America's just going to have a really good facility where kids are like, that's what happened. Christian Pulisic, McKinney, Tyler, as all these guys that were the like the best of the best in America, they all went to Germany. All mm-hmm. three of those kids went to Germany. There's no exception. They yeah. all went to Germany as soon as they were big enough. And it's like, why are we sending? I mean, if we want to be the best, we can't send those kids to Germany. We got to have grassroots clubs or 
clubs that are willing to say, yeah, we're going to pay this kid what they're worth and they're right. going to come here and we're going to do what we got to do to get them to stay here. And we're not mm-hmm. going to say you got to go to college and make great. It's like this kid dropped out, of, dropped out of school when he was 10 years old and like you just got a tutor so he could learn how to do basic arithmetic and conjugate yeah. verbs. <laughs> and now he's focusing on what he needs to focus on. Like it's yeah. not impo- like if this kid, like if he wants to be Damien Lillard and go back and get his degree after he's in the league, good for him. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you know, it's not the most, and not everyone, college isn't for everybody. I mean, you're an educator, so it's, you know, I agree. You're, you're to sing, but it's not, it's not for everybody. Like I don't need, you know, you know, to learn how to do calculus. If my goal in life is to be the best midfielder that's ever come out of Nebraska, <laughs> and, you know, it is, that's all. Yeah. No, you're bringing no, you're not wrong, that, man. That, MLS is, I think, it doesn't have a hope. Maybe the, the U.S. men's national team would have a better chance because you're right. They do have to go to Europe, but they do have potentially come back to play for the nation. You know, not in yeah. MLS. No, but, no, you know. but I think, I think no, as, lo- as long as it's in its current format where we have these stupid yeah, playoffs, yeah. man, it's not going to No, it's not <laughs> Yeah. It's like, yeah, and, and the other thing, and this is my last thing, and then I'm done, and we're at an hour, so yeah. we should probably wrap it up. But – no one else is going to respect major league soccer as long as we have the stupid playoff. Like Golly. it's, I like, it's like, if we want it, like if, like if we want to have like a tournament that ran concurrent with this season for like mm-hmm. the top 10 teams of the previous year and yeah. call it like, you know, the major league champions league or whatever, yeah. that's one thing, but to have a post season, like this is the in the NBA yeah. It's like, what did we just play? How many ever games Major League Soccer plays for? And like, there's a, there's a, like someone gets awarded for having the most points. It's just swept under the rug. No right. one could tell. Mm-hmm. I think what they call it, it the support it, it, or the, the community shield, shield or something. Supporter yeah. shield. Yeah. And I think it was actually LAFC that won the supporter shield and the Major League playoffs this year. So that like that's the first time that's happened in a long time. But like otherwise, if it wasn't them, say it was like Columbus Crew, it's like Columbus Crew isn't heralded as champions of anything. They're just like, oh yeah, they got the most points. They're idiots. Yeah. Like they wow. didn't, yeah. they didn't rest their players, you know, like you just need, basically they're just saying make it to the playoffs and then ball out instead of like play a full round robin. And it's not even a full round robin. Now I'm getting pissed off again. It's like you play teams that are closer to you more often. It's like, how is that even fair? Now we're back to like college football. It's like, oh, I got to play LAFC three times because I live in Utah or my club's in Utah, but like the New York Red Bulls only have to play them once and they're the right. best team in the league. Right. How's that fair, man? Like I, we never stood a chance. We never yeah. stood a chance. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, man. The, the, the format, <laughs> geographics, like we need. You know, if we had, if we had, you know, four leagues in the in the corners of the United States, you know, it would make more sense. But I saw I saw an interesting uh, reel. I guess I don't know whatever. Just on social media the other day, and it, it just had the distance traveled average by teams no, that's across, wild. across across leagues. And it was like in the Premier League, they travel something like four thousand miles in the entire across mm-hmm. the entire season. In La Liga, it was like it was like five thousand. In the oh, Bundesliga, yeah. it was like six. In the United States, That's it was wild. like twenty thousand miles <laughs> average travel yeah. the team. And so, and, and you know, and, and then they 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 harken back to like Thierry Henry and well, Steve Jordan didn't play that very long, but like you know, all these all these dudes that played and then you know played retirement ball in the MLS. Uh, <laughs> then they came here. They said, "Man, playing in the MLS, it was really really hard because we had to travel from." You know, yeah. L.A. to New York, right across three, four time yeah. zones or whatever that is. And, you know, and then suit up, boot up and play. It's like, nah, yeah. yeah. So there's yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of in, intrinsic and extrinsic fas- factors here yeah. that, that are uh, that are, that are going to keep us down. And until those are mitigated, managed and and sort of overcome. Yeah, you know, man. But I think that I mean, this is my last thing and then we'll go because it's been one of three. But I think that to Blaine's point of like. You kind of touched on it. Why don't they just need to have an, an identity of like, okay, you know what? We'll be the farm league for Europe. We'll be like the totally. Borussia Dortmund of America. Like that's whole league. Yeah. We'll just be because we. You guys said it. There's talent in America. Like there has to be. There is. Yeah. So find it and then sell it for a ton of money, and you've made a better business just make than that what you're trying identity. to do right now. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Good points. Good points. Good points. This was fun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I mean, I everybody, <laughs> let me wrap this up then. Everybody out there, thank you so much for spending you know time with us. This has been a very insightful discussion. 
John, we want to, you know, thank you for taking time out of your uh, new year to, you know, come here and uh, talk football, soccer, collegiate football, sports, problems that face Major League Soccer. It's truly been a pleasure to have you with us today. Hopefully we can get you on again sometime yeah. and, uh, you know, continue the conversation. Would love to, man. Any old time. Always, always free, always willing. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time. Peace.